Subaru CBT TR580 Continuously Variable Transmission. In this video, we're going to be talking about the TR580 exclusively with naturally aspirated engines. I'm revisiting this topic because I got a lot of views on my first one, but I also got a lot of hate. So I'm going to try to do a little bit better job this time on explaining some of the positive and negative things about the CBT. The CBT has that variable ratio. It utilizes a variator and a chain. Which of Subaru's cars utilize the TR580 transmission? Any of the cars that have the FB25 or FB20 engines. That would be the Forester, the Outback, the Legacy, the Crosstrek, and the Impreza. With naturally aspirated Subaru engines, they have their maximum torque rating at around 4,200 RPM and then a maximum horsepower rating at around 6,200 RPM. You can use the engine in those high RPMs with the caveat that if your engine isn't sealed properly or if you have reliability issues with it, it's probably not a good idea. There's three places that I found the FB20 engine likes to be. It likes to hang out in the low range between idle and 3,000. Then there's a second zone which is around over 3,000 to maybe 4,200. And then there's the high range which is in the 4,500 to 6,000 plus range. And so you can get different power outputs at these three places in the RPM range. So how do you know when to shift your gears? There's an indicator on the dash where it would say drive, reverse, neutral, park. That is where it will tell you what gear ratio you're in. It'll have an indicator with an up arrow or a down arrow or a combination of an up and down arrow. There's no hard number at where to shift. I've found that it's mostly a feeling. Uh, you get used to how the engine revs and the power output commanded by your foot and the gas pedal. You kind of know where you have enough torque to want to shift into the next gear. I think it's a lot of feeling. It takes experience, but there's no hard fast rule, I'm sorry. In my 2016 Impreza Sport, the CVT has six program gear ratios. The best way to get into utilizing the CVT is to start using the paddle shifters. By tapping the left paddle, you're going to be downshifting, so lowering the gear. By tapping the right paddle, you're going to be increasing the gear ratios or moving up in the gear range. CVT safety features. The gear ratios are sequential, meaning that you cannot jump from one to four or three to one or any of those weird combinations. You have to go through the gear ratios sequentially. If you rev your engine up in first gear all the way to the top, it will automatically shift before red line. And that's to save your engine from blowing up. The CVT will let you know that it doesn't want to shift into a lower gear ratio by beeping twice. It'll go beep beep. The CVT will not let you downshift if you are at or above 4000 RPM. What's the difference between manual mode and drive mode? Manual mode will allow the engine to hold its RPMs. In drive mode, the TCU will take over and it detects that the driver doesn't need as much torque or power and it'll just change its gear ratios automatically. How to use your car in manual mode. Paddle shifter, paddle shifter, paddle shifter. In the city, the CVT is extremely good in manual mode. It allows you to play with the engine RPMs. For those that know that their engine is reliable, just smash that engine, man. The FB20 especially, in my experience, has been really, really solid in terms of just putting out a lot of smiles per gallon. Second gear ratio on a CVT is very similar to the second gear ratio of a manual transmission. And for a lot of uh, city driving, you'll find yourself in second, you'll be able to control your car a lot more. And it's actually more engaging to drive that way. Neutral drop. There may be some instances where you want to quickly reduce the RPMs of your engine. A quick way of doing this is to use the neutral in your drivetrain. Manual drivers utilize this technique quite often by putting their car in neutral and coasting. You can do the same thing with a CVT. 
in my previous videos I've gotten a lot of flack for doing this people saying that you might prematurely wreck your CVT if you use neutral and then back into drive mode again you may want to take caution in putting the car back into drive mode I typically do that with no throttle at what RPM range does the manual mode shift for you? Typically, it's around 6,000 RPM. There is a little secret though that somebody told me, which is you'll need to disable or turn off your VDC, Vehicle Dynamics Control. This allows the engine to go all the way up to 6,200 RPM, allowing you to get that peak horsepower. It also mutes a little bit of your ABS sensors and your traction control systems, allowing you to rotate the car a little bit more freely, uh, allows you to let your wheels slip a little bit more. That VDC button, another topic, but by disabling it, that is allowing you, the engine to go all the way into the maximum range. What are some cons to the CVT? In terms of sporty driving, the CVT feels a little bit slow to shift. The CVT has variators which change dynamically and that change in ratio takes a little bit more time. Another one of the cons for the CVT, like automatic transmissions, is that they require a lot of cooling. So the CVT can go into limp mode, which limits the RPM range of the engine to 4,000. And if you're under that 4,000 range, you're not getting the maximum torque. How to reduce the likelihood that your CVT will overheat? You put a transmission cooler in. Similar to that, like big trucks, they have an external transmission cooler, which is typically mounted in front of the radiator to allow for the fluid to cool passively and also have a larger reservoir for more heat capacity. I'm not going to go into how to change the CVT fluid because frankly, it's a messy job. The fluid is expensive and unless you have the right tools to do the job and, and you're prepared to do it, I would say leave it to a professional. That could be a Subaru dealership or it could be your mechanic that you know. You may or may not want to launch your CVT. What does that mean? People have interpreted this as slipping, but it's more like the CVT knows that the clamping force on the variators is not enough at this moment in time, and it releases it to go into an easier gear ratio. This is the CVT trying to save itself. No harm has been done to the CVT. So you may have some modifications to your car that may change where and when you shift the manual mode. For instance, if you have Crawford billet power blocks, that's going to change your torque to a lower range. If you have a CBT paired with headers, your shifting may change because of that. And I think it's really up to the driver to understand what's happening to the car. Okay, folks, it's showtime! For those who like to experience, there is a thrill when you can push a mechanical device into its upper limits. It's disrupting our motor control! 